Welcome back everyone. So in today's video, we're going to be looking again at the PlayStation 3 and we're going to be talking about how you can run PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 backups on your PlayStation 3 running custom firmware. So that's a cool thing about the PS3 is the backwards compatibility that's in there. We'll start off talking about PlayStation 1 because it's a simpler subject. So this can be done through Multiman. So again, if I just load Multi-Manager up here, really all I would need to do is place PlayStation ISO files on a USB hard drive and then copy them through to the PSX ISO folder in the root of the main hard drive on your PS3. So you can copy ISO files or bin files through and Multiman will detect them and allow you to play them through the retro screen. So to the right of the actual PS3 game section, there is a retro icon here. And in here, we can simply select one of these games. So we'll just try Final Fantasy VIII Disc 1 and it just launches the game straight away. There's no need to mount it or do anything like we did for the PS3 backups. So as you can see, Final Fantasy VIII boots straight up, no hassles at all. All you really need to do is put it onto 4x3 mode instead of full screen, I reckon, since that's the way PS1 games were designed to be viewed. I will say that the PlayStation 3's PS1 emulation is really good for casual gameplay. It's surprisingly accurate and Almost 100% of PS1 games are going to work just fine on your PS3. Straight out of the box, no hassle at all, really good and really simple to use. So the same thing can't be said for the PS2 backwards compatibility on the PS3. Some of you may not know, but the earliest models of the PS3 released in the US and Japan actually had something called an Emotion Engine inside them. So what that was was true hardware backwards compatibility for the PS2. And it boasted that it could play, you know, pretty much 100% of PS2 games in your PS3 if you had one of those earliest models. But for Europe and every PS3 model since then, they, at first, they toned it down and said, you know, we're going to not put an emotion engine in every PS3. It's just going to be software emulation. Basically, the software emulation, it's okay, but probably not even 40 or 50% of the PS2 library will actually run and some of those games will run with graphical issues and things like that so it's far from perfect and then in later models of the ps3 they just took ps2 support out altogether i guess someone said this is going to be too hard to improve the compatibility here you know the the software emulation can only go so far and yeah majority of ps3s out there have no backwards compatibility support for the ps2 but with the Rebug custom firmware that I had you guys install, if you followed my first PS3 tutorial, it actually unlocks that software emulator in basically every PS3. So it's pretty great. It'll give your system some more backwards compatibility. And yeah, there's a few tricks to loading PS2 backups with custom firmware. So I'm going to talk about them now. So Multi-Manager does have an option to load PS2 backups, but it's actually not the best way to do it. Like I said, compatibility is not great for the PlayStation 2, but there are some things we can do to improve it. The first thing in the video description is going to be a download link. What it is, it's a tool called Mana Guns, and it's a package file. So if you download that and then place it onto a packages folder on your USB drive, or just into the root of your USB drive, and then on your system you can go ahead and install it, like I'm doing here. What this is, is it's an alternative backup loader, kind of like Multiman, but it does its own thing for PS2 games, and it does something really impressive, which is create a config file for the PS2 games, and the config files are basically emulator settings. So just running your PS2 games through Mana Guns rather than Multiman, it's going to increase compatibility, as well as provide a lot of fixes for games that had errors or you know, graphical issues or they freeze at certain points, the config files which are in place can actually stop a lot of that stuff from happening, which is pretty awesome. So this is how Mana Guns looks. And right now it's got a list of all my PS1, PS2 and PS3 games. 
I'm only going to focus on PS2 games for Mana Guns, really, because Multiman does everything else really well. Um, but basically, here's some PS2 ISOs I've got here, and I'll just go ahead and push X to mount the game. So the PS2 games need to be loaded into the PS2 folder, again on the root of your USB. You mount them, similar to the way that you would a PS3 game, and then you choose the PlayStation 2 disc that shows up in XMB. So just running the game through Mana Guns has gone ahead and activated a config file, and it'll give you higher compatibility as well as some fixes for certain games. So again, I recommend holding down the home button, coming into other settings and changing it to normal view. Smoothing is up to you if you like that or not. So here's Project Zero Three. It's a really beautiful horror game on the PS2. And always look in the video settings on a PS2 game. For example, this one here has a progressive mode option, which just makes the visuals better, basically, if you have a compatible TV. So once you move your PS2 games to the hard drive, make sure you use Mana Guns to load them. That way the config files will be in place. And another cool thing is, if there is a game that doesn't have a config file out there, I'm going to leave a link in the description to a repository which has a whole list of additional PS2 config files. So if you try a game and it's not supported by the emulator or if it has some problems, you can also go to that link and see if there's a custom config file available to download. And basically all you have to do is move that config file into the same folder as your PS2 ISO, name it the same way, give it the same name as your ISO, and then when you run it through Mana Guns, it will try to load that config file for you. And so that's a, a way that you can get even more compatibility out of the software emulation. Pretty awesome and definitely a lesser known trick for loading PS2 games on the PS3. So I wanted to share that with you guys for sure. So the last thing I'll mention is not to forget that for certain PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games, they were actually released on the PlayStation Network store as downloads. So for those games that did see a release in the PlayStation Store, you don't have to worry about the ISO files. In fact, what you can do is download a package file for those games and then install them directly onto your XMB home menu if you would like to. And the good thing about that is games that are running through the package file are guaranteed 100% accurate and, you know, compatible because they were sold to consumers in the store. So Sony made sure they were up to a uh, particular quality level. All right, team, so that about covers PS1 and PS2 game loading on the PS3. I might have another video or two on the PlayStation 3, so stay tuned for those if you're interested. Just a reminder, guys, my channel is now accepting cryptocurrency donations as well as all your normal currencies. So if you'd like to donate some Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash or Ether, just go ahead and check the bottom of the video description to find out how to do that. And there's also a PayPal link down there as well if you just want to donate some standard currencies. Really appreciate all of your guys' support. It helps me upload these videos at a more frequent rate. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Hope you have a beautiful day. Peace out.